what we mainly do is uh, looking at your heel pain. Uh, so it's more your assessment of the heel pain. So it's going to be quite important to be aware of your differential diagnosis uh, as opposed to just taking it as straight off as plantar fasciitis. So you put, as I was saying beforehand, your palpation skill is going to be your most important thing. So the more you can um, be able to detect through palpation, you're going to determine as to more accurately your diagnosis. So if we're looking at your plantar fascia, its main insertion point is into this section here. Yeah, so that's pretty much where it, it inserts. Now, however, underneath the plantar fascia insertion point, you've got the adductor hallucis brevis, You've also got the medial head of your quadratus plantae muscle and also the flexor digitum brevis. So all those inserts into this section here directly below the plantar fascia. So if we're actually looking at that, so this is pretty much where they're going to actually insert. Now again, your digitum brevis will come forward and then expand to each of the digits and sit directly below your plantar fascia and run the same course as what your plantar fascia will actually run. Yeah? So it is important to make a differentiation between the muscle and the plantar fascia. You're going to find in most cases it's going to be the muscle that's involved and not necessarily the plantar fascia. So first things first is always check muscle strength. Yeah, so you can put your hands onto the toes and ask her to flex the toes against resistance. Yeah. And just resist that. Then check against the other foot to determine strength of these toes against the other foot. Yeah? And see if there's any difference between muscle strength. Again, take the hallux back to its neutral position and then flex and then you can resist that and again check against the other toes. And you're going to find in most cases these muscles are going to be weak, more so the hallux. So that means that what's going to be important is strengthening. So again if you look at the studies the cause of heel pain or your plantar fasciitis as we know it is weakness in the adductor hallucis. Yeah, so in other words if that's weak it puts more stretch stress on the middle longitudinal arch. Following that, if we were to flex the digits back, it puts more tension onto the plantar fascia. So if we follow the plantar fascia down to its insertion point and then palpate into that region, if that's more tender to the patient and you take the fascia off stretch and now palpate, now if that's giving more discomfort, that will indicate it's the muscle. If you bring it back and you do the same thing again and that's more tender, then that will indicate it's the plantar fascia that's more involved. Okay? So, first things first is making a distinction as to which structure is actually involved. Now, other things will actually cause pain into this region. If somebody's got a back problem, mainly in L4, L5, S1, that will refer pain into this region. So you'll have your nerve that will actually extend round into here. So one of the best things to do is to come alongside and palpate to see if that's tender. If that nerve root there is tender, you can start to chase the nerve coming up on the medial side and also check the low back. And you'll normally find if it's just the one foot, in most cases, it's on the side in which the pain lies within the heel. So that would need to be ruled out. Funny enough, I find that more common in, don't ask me why, but it's more common in women than it is in men. Yeah? So if I look at the amount of men in my time of practice that I've treated uh, with a low back pain, emanating pain to the heel, I'd say it must be in total about four or five. Rest of them have all been women. Yeah? So, it is a common condition that I'll see where I'm actually treating more the back as opposed to the heel itself. So it will refer pain and give you similar symptoms of your plantar fascia. 
Same again, you need to make sure that you haven't got any nerve entrapment um, coming from the retinaculum in and around this area. You can do the tunnel test um, to see if there's any um, tingling sensation or anything like that. But that's going to be in and around this region here. You have got your trigger point in your ductor hallucis. Um, so again, you need to palpate, check that. Um, come up and check your trigger point in your soleus muscle. Again, that will refer pain directly over the posterior aspects of the heel. More central is your quadratus plantae. And what that will basically do is to refer pain directly over that part of the heel there. So again, that's going to be quite important to actually eliminate those before you actually start any treatment. But most importantly, make sure you check the strength um, of the actual muscles as part of your assessment. Any weakness there, you do need to restore the strength of the muscles. Otherwise, what you're basically doing is a person stands and walks, regardless of where we put insoles in, that weakness is going to delay any recovery. So that can make a big um, impact. Do you want to just turn on to your front form? <clears throat> so if you're looking at treatment wise, I always say first port of call for treatment would mainly be starting off by doing some soft tissue work up into the calf. So it's more or less taking the tension out of the calf muscle. So if you were to do that, you can do soft tissue into the calf. Once you've finished that, then I would normally say come to your urinary bladder 57. Yeah? And what you want to basically do is just come in and apply a little bit of pressure into your 57. You don't have to needle, just apply pressure so again, how's your 57? Yeah. Yeah. So, but you will find most individuals who's got cough, um, heel pain, they will have tight coughs and it will be quite tender. So when you're actually doing any soft tissue massage on that, that's going to be quite sore. As time goes on, it will start to settle. So you just find your 57, apply a bit of pressure, wait until it eases off, discomfort wise. You've got a urinary bladder 58, which is just going to come literally one sum down and slightly across. But what you're better off doing is palpating for the edge of the um, tendon. Yeah? So just come onto the edge of that and you find that may well be tender. So that's your urinary bladder 58. If you come more medial, same to the opposite side, this is going to be more your kidney nine again that's the trigger point again apply pressure to that these ones will refer pain more so over this area of your heel yeah uh, so it's more or less making sure that they're eliminated out of the equation so it's just start by doing a bit of soft tissue work and then uh, eliminate the trigger points that's going to be referred down into the actual heel section itself Coming back to the plantar aspect of the foot, <clears throat> you have got your trigger points on the side, whether you do any soft tissue work to the foot. Uh, but I always say, if you are going to do a massage to the foot, don't come into this area and start doing any friction. So your primary objective is to try and settle that and not inflame it. So ideally, is to do your soft tissue work coming down along the muscles, but not coming directly into the insertion point. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then that will start to strip out these muscles, relax them off. Then you can start to work into any of the trigger points and apply your pressure into trigger points to start to deactivate those. Normally, your pressure is going to be held for anything between 30 um, to 40 seconds, depending uh, on the actual individual. That will normally take that out. If it is a quadratus plantae, again, you can apply your pressure into quadratus plantae until that eases off, but that depends as to where the pain and dysfunction is actually uh, experienced. That is mainly followed by stretching exercises, so it's going to be important that you give them some good stretching exercises for the calf muscles, the soleus, and also for the muscles, uh, intrinsic muscles of the feet. So it's no good applying any pressure release and not giving them some stretching um, to do and then some strengthening exercises for <coughs> uh, Acupuncture wise, 
We'll start off with uh, kidney one. Everyone gas. So, quite a strong point that is. And we'll come on to your kidney three. And kidney six. Right, so <clears throat> taking more dry needling approach is needling more directly into the region of the plantar fascia. So you find your most tender point, you can just come to the side of it, press down firmly with the tube as a distraction. Okay? Yeah, I was sore. And one slightly further along. Now, in the case of if I was to do, to do electroacupuncture on there, I find the most tender spot and then do what you call surround a dragon. In other words, I put four points in and then put my electrodes to it. That is quite effective. If you have got electroacupuncture where you've just got, uh, you can just apply negative polarity and there's any really swelling, that's pretty much what I put around it and that will help to significantly reduce the swelling and also ease the pain a lot quicker. Um, so last two points, this is more to encourage more tissue repair. It's gonna be a spleen six. And stomach 36. You can put your spleen 3 in if you so desire. Now, the main purpose of these two points, again, for inflammation purposes, they'll help to reduce inflammation. Your spleen 6, stomach 36, but also when you start to give them exercise for the intrinsic muscles they'll also aid in strengthening the muscles as well. So these two main focus on um, the tissue repair, allowing that to, the repair process to significantly improve and also help to reduce swelling inflammation in and around the foot and ankle. And that will also be encouraged by your kidney points. Any um, damage to the bone or anything like that where the plantar fascia or the muscles actually insert because that area is going to also be inflamed as well. So therefore you've got more of a local response as well as your distal point that's going to have its desired effect. Okay, anybody got any questions at all?